What up, movie fans? Welcome to another episode of the Real Movie Watchers podcast with your hosts, Matt McGuire and Alec Fritz. Yo, yo. Here we are. We made it to December. This is our seventh episode, and today is December 3rd, 2019. Oh, yeah. 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 Just a week after Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. There. And I definitely had, I'm stuffed from Thanksgiving. Yeah, you had multiple Thanksgiving mm-hmm. dinners. Yeah. I'm just like, I think I'm still like, I feel like I'm st- I'm still in holiday mode. Yeah. Got to go back to work tomorrow, and it's just like, uh, So, yeah, because you had these days off. Yeah, Monday was tough going back to work, yeah. especially after teacher's break off. Mm-hmm. I had, what, three days off? Good chilling, hanging out, getting the house ready with Christmas stuff, and then, yeah, getting back. But only three more weeks till winter break, so that'll be nice. <sighs> Yeah, winter can make break it through. should be nice. Winter yeah. breaks are great. Don't you love winter break? Yeah. I used to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. About ten years ago, and I still got them. Or yeah. Probably even longer than but that now. They're only two weeks long, so it's not really. Yeah, not really that's much time not really all. much time. They get at over all. pretty quickly. Yeah. You might as well just not even take it off. It doesn't feel like I get one really. You know, <laughs> it's two weeks, just boom, gone. Well, you Back know, like yeah, I can give you. You know, it's easy to give you shit once upon a time. I feel like now though. Um, you know, with Lucy, with the, with your kid, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it makes you, yeah. It's you'll have your hands plenty full. Yeah, yeah. It's not really a break. It's just yeah, then more kid stuff. It's at just home. a break from work. It's yeah, not really a break. From I don't get to sleep else. in or anything, yes. so that's the only reason breaks are good because your sleep gets better. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yeah. Today we wanted to. So we're gonna do two episodes this December. Definitely, the next one is gonna be our Christmas movie episode. I'm excited for it because I got a big list of Christmas movies. Oh, I know you do. Yeah, which mm-hmm. actually reminds me. Have you seen Arthur Christmas? No. All right. No. Uh, well, you have two copies of that, so you can take a copy home, and I would recommend you watch that before okay. our next podcast. Yeah, I mean, I definitely plan on um, putting in some – logging some movie time before, uh, you know, for the Christmas episode, and I have been – uh, upping my movie watching game, so my my movies that I've watched since the last uh, podcast have has just been more. So okay, sweet. I'm excited to hear. Uh, but yeah, for this podcast, uh, we decided to change it up a little bit. We're gonna do a choose your version kind of game, where we'll talk about different versions of either the same character or the same movies and which ones we prefer. So we'll see what you guys think. Yeah, there's a lot out there. There's a lot. There's yeah. yeah there's just a some few of them are easy. Too. Some of them are definitely yeah. Like it's like I know. Well, know, there's a bunch. I've only seen one clips. version. I haven't seen like the originals or something. Right. I'm like, oh, well, I can't even compare it then. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Like your uh, what you put on your list in the text rag rag tune. Ragtown, the true grit guy, his character name. Oh, Rooster Cogbert. Rooster, yeah. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? I had to look him up. And it's like, oh. You had and to I've, look up Rooster? Yeah. And I've only seen the remake, True Grit, so I can't even compare oh, it to the original. Oh, man, dude. Get <laughs> out of here. And I guess there's a sequel from that, the old original True Grit. Uh, but before we get into that, well, let's do yeah some of our opening segments here, the warm-up discussion, uh, some movies we've seen recently and what we thought about them. Um, since you've seen quite a bit. Why don't you go for it? Okay. What you got? Oh, sorry, man. I'm still so uncomfortable from dinner. I hate that food had, uncomfort, food discomfort. Man. I had too many tacos. Too oh. many damn tacos. Yeah, well, you can't help yourself with tacos and cheesecake. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bro. Double whammy. <laughs> in there. It was fucking. I've been eating so good lately, man. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah. So movies that I've watched. Couple repeats. I watched, uh, you know, like the Disney shit, dude, it just keeps going, man. Uh, you know, Finding Nemo, watch that. Watch Zootopia. Again. That wasn't your first time seeing Finding no. Nemo. Okay. No, 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 All right. no, no. Um, Little Mermaid. Classic. The animated Lion King. Uh, Mulan. Doctor Strange. Did you guys splurge on Disney Plus? So you yeah, yeah, now? so we have Disney okay. Plus, so mm-hmm. yeah, I've been watching quite a bit of Disney. Um yeah, and then just watched Doctor Strange again the other night. Love that movie. Uh, Rewatch Zombieland, and Ooh. I hadn't seen Zombieland in a while. And, you know, the new one is yeah, yeah, it's coming here. So, uh, yeah, that one's good. That one's still still pretty good. Yeah, I can see that. I have to revisit that um, one. Rewatched Rounders. It's just like my favorite. One of my. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. 
And Isn't that the gambling? Is that take place uh, in it's Vegas? It's about poker. It's okay. it's it doesn't take place in Vegas. It's um, but it's about poker. It's what got me started. It's what got me into poker, and I think mm. it's also it plays a a pretty significant role in kind of kicking off the poker boom that happened, you know, way back what in, year in this the early two thousands. It came out yeah. like late nineties. Okay, I thought it was older. Um, Matt Damon, Ed Norton, John Malkovich. Ooh, um, all right. Um, and then why can't I think of his name? The Jesus from Big Lebowski. Oh, John T- Turturro. Yeah, Tur- John Turturro. Yeah, yeah. yeah Turturro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was like, I was thinking Passion of the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I know I can recognize, but I don't know his name. <laughs> yeah, and a couple other um, notable guys, but yeah, I love that movie. One of my favorites. Um, I'll have to check that out. I finally saw both Ant Man's. Ant Man and then Ant oh, Man and, and the Wasp. Yeah, uh, but I take it you've probably seen the Avengers, like yeah, Endgame and all that. I saw that, okay. but I I skipped over the Ant Man shit because uh, I just wasn't interested in it at the time. Oh, um, there's I definitely had like a a Marvel overload. There's a lot to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, it's nice to watch it now. And uh, yeah, dude, the first one's awesome. Yeah, the second one is is good. Not yeah. as good as the first one. Though. The okay. first one's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed the first one too. Yeah. For sure, that's worth it. And then um, to finish it off, I d- oh I saw the Joker. I did mm-hmm. see Joker. Yeah, uh, I saw that, that yeah. in the theater with Megan. Uh, yeah, that one's good. Um, and then I did see um, a documentary. It's called Charged: The Eduardo Garcia Story. So this dude is based off a real dude. Um, it's a documentary about a guy who basically he was out in the in the wilderness um hunting um and he came across I'm trying to remember now he came across a like a barrel that was out in the middle of nowhere and it had like a dead uh animal in it and he like curiosity got the best of him and he went to like touch it and he got electrocuted, like, by 20,000-some-odd volts of electricity or some weird shit. Jesus. Um, ended up getting, like, his, he had to get his arm amputated. He had to do all this shit. And uh, and then it's just kind of about his, like, journey of recovery and everything. And, uh, yeah, he's, like, he went on fucking all those television shows and everything like that, too. Did a little, you know, media tour. Kind of got, like, semi-famous. When did this happen? Mm, I don't remember, but fairly recently, I, I I would say like within the last ten years, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's about this guy's like injury and what happened to him and all kind of his personal stuff. So it was pretty pretty it, interesting. It sounds like an interesting story. Yeah. Charged was that on Netflix or something? No, well you got that on Amazon Prime. Um, okay, I've got that. Yeah, and I would like to you know kind of ties into some other things where like i think maybe a, a podcast episode for the future that's you know whenever would be like uh out you know kind of like adventure outdoor documentaries like uh something like that uh, what's the bear girls one or not bear girls uh dude they got killed by bears yeah yeah the fucking grizzly adams guy or whatever yeah. the fuck yeah grizzly man grizzly I man forgot there we what go fucking or real name was. yeah <laughs> but you know and then uh, i don't know if you've seen like free solo yeah, I watched. I saw the very end of it when it was on TV or yeah, something, yeah, and yeah. So, I could so. barely watch it, even though I know he made it. Yeah, I think that would be a cool, uh, cool po- adventure documentary. Yeah, or documentaries and documentaries in general. Definitely, there's been some mm-hmm. good ones I've seen. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. So yeah, I I logged in some movie time. Some shit, you know, was just like re- rehashing old stuff. Yeah. And fucking around on Disney Prime. Um, Disney Plus, yeah. Disney Get Plus, Disney, yeah. Mandalorian, getting into that. And stuff. I actually haven't seen any of that yet, but that's it's coming up. Yeah, it's, that's it's fun. Coming. I've been enjoying it. Well, nice. Yeah, it's a good list there. What about you? Um. All right. So I saw basically four. Well, so I did see A Star Is Born, but that was months ago, and forgot to mention that in the last podcast. But I love that movie. yeah, I did really enjoy it, and it was one of those where it's like you saw the train wreck coming. And you can't stop it. And it was just, yeah, well done. And the characters, just their performances and singing and everything was fantastic. So that was definitely good. I had to look up the 
the original, the first two originals, and see like was, did it happen the same way? I saw it was a little bit different, mm-hmm. but yeah, I like, I really like it a lot. What yeah, I, I love that movie. The movie's solid. Yeah, it was great. Um, so I did watch on, I think it was on Disney Plus their Christmas movie Noel with Anna Kendrick yeah. and um, I just forgot his name now. I just faced it, but from SNL. Um, and it not worth it. I would say no. Just, <laughs> that was. No, I was like, it's going to be a good little cute Christmas movie to get in the spirit, but no, oh, yeah. not very good. Netflix has a few of those, too, that I put on just in the background. I'm like, this is a terrible movie. So I would not recommend that one. Um, and w- There's many other Christmas movies you should watch before that one. Uh, but then I, we did finally watch Downton Abbey, the movie. Oh, um, yeah. And yeah, that's good. If you're a Downton Abbey fan, you'll like the movie. Mm. It's wrapped up very nicely in a bow at the end, and... You get all the aspects from the show. It just felt like one long episode. But, yeah, that's fun. Did you, never, you, guys, did you guys? never got into that show. No? Uh-uh. I didn't think I would until I started watching it. And, like, first I watched, got a few episodes in. And I was like, you know, I kind of like this, even though it's, like, British and Like, I can blah, definitely blah. see the appeal of the show. It would probably be something that I would, like, get attached to a little bit. But at the same time, I kind of had a principle I'm just – it's just it. gonna avoid down <laughs> <Yeah>. anything. <laughs> well, if you get into it, it's worth it. But yeah, it's yeah. So the movie was good, and then just yesterday, two days ago, I watched uh, Ready or Not. Did you ever seen that preview? I think I sent it to you once. Um, basically, mm-hmm. it had a unique, it was a unique take. Um, this bride gets married, and part of her in-laws' family tradition is they all have to play a game on the w- night of the wedding. And if you pull a certain card to turn like a hide and seek card, it's actually where the family has to try and find the bride in the house and then kill her in like a ritual manner. Um, or otherwise, something bad happens to their family. And it's actually really fun. It was a good movie. Yeah. Good, fun, like gore, chaser, thriller. Uh, not necessarily scary. There's good, like some good stalking parts in it and hiding and everything, but just like a fun movie. And it was definitely unique, like not like any other movie I'd seen before, really. So I recommend that one, cool. ready or not. Yeah. What's that on? Uh, I watched it on Kevin's Plex. Oh. So I don't think it's out for rent yet okay. or on Amazon. But yeah, yeah, it was one I wanted to check out. It had like the, the right vibe of what movies I enjoy. Um, so yeah. And that was it, actually, since the last episode. Hasn't been too many. Now I'm starting my Christmas movie uh, binge. Yeah, we're going to have to hit. gear up for that one. Yeah, yeah, lots of good ones. I try. I, I have a problem where I watch too many too soon. I'm like, oh shit, I'm out of good Christmas movies because that's when I get onto ones that are crappy, like Noel. I was yeah. just like, no, I've there, already seen Elf. Already seen. There's the a lot ones. of classics, but yeah, you could burn through them for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got to pace them out. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, have you seen any upcoming movies that you are excited for? Still, no, I mean, just still kind of more the same on the upcoming movie stuff. Um, you know, the you know, waiting for the Avatar, more Star Wars. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, uh, shit, Star Wars going to be coming out. Okay. Yeah, just stuff like that. I haven't really seen too many previews of new stuff, so I'm not really sure what's even coming down the pipe. But Yeah, and I haven't kept up on new previews recently, but I did just for this episode look up some movies that are either getting rebooted or remade mm-hmm. to put on here that I thought I was curious about. Um, so they are doing... Um, did you ever watch the Fletch movies with Chevy Chase? Uh, no. Ooh, you should check those out. Solid 80s movies, 80 synth. Chevy Chase in his prime Coke days, just doing awesome Chevy Chase stuff. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, so nice. Definitely check out Fletch. I think we have both of them, so you can borrow them at some point. All right. But they're doing... Um, it's supposedly because I guess those movies are based on some books, and so they're making n- one of the books into a movie. And uh, there's rumored to be uh, Jason Sudeikis as the Fletch character, hmm. which I could see him pulling it off. I think he might have the right vibe for that. Play Fletch. Fletch is basically just a private. Now uh, what is it? A journalist, undercover journalist, uh-huh. independent journalist. He, like, tries to blow, get big stories out there, like, what's happening and stuff. So he kind of puts on different disguises and different characters and stuff and classic Chevy Chase scenes in the original movie. I'll have to borrow those from you then. 
Yeah, I they're legit. Them. They're yeah. fucking awesome. Oh, I do want to see the movie Bombshell. You familiar with that? I don't know if I've seen that preview. <laughs> Bombshell? Yeah, it's about the whole... Um, like Fox News kind of oh yeah yeah all, three, when all the three shit women. Yeah. went down yeah mm-hmm. got the um, what Margot Robbie um, Nicole Kidman Nicole Kidman and uh, Charlie yeah. yeah so yeah. Kate McKinnon I mean I'll see that movie just for I mean it, yeah they're all doesn't legit. matter what it is yeah I'll, I would see a movie with all three of them in it anyway, for sure so. yeah I have seen that preview see I'm ready for that one. Um, and I also read they are going to do a remake of An American Werewolf in London. Ooh, nice. Yeah, and it's this time, I think it's going to be a female character lead who turns into the werewolf. And it's being made by John Lannis' son. So John Lannis made the first movie, and his son is going to be making this one. So they're trying to keep it like true to form. It shouldn't just be like some crappy remake or the hopes for. That's cool. But That's yeah, good, I'm like, uh, I'll check that out. I'm curious. I can see that. It's a good strategy, I guess, on their part. Yeah, they're they're gonna because the original movie, the son was commenting that there just didn't wasn't didn't a lot a lot didn't happen in the movie by the end. Just there's some good scenes, a good transformation scene, and all that, but nothing really went on. So he's trying to add more to the story in there with like the the police investigation and then the townsfolk and the pentagram that they had there about the wolf and stuff. So like more of a backstory, I guess. Yeah, but that's cool. Caught my interest because I love that movie. So, yeah, I'll check that out. Um, there's also a Starship Troopers reboot in the works. What? <laughs> yeah. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Yep. Rebooting it, and it's they're going to try to remain truer to the novel. Dude, that's my one time. That's like one of my all-time favorite sci-fis. Oh, yeah. It's fucking yeah. badass. Because yeah. even – because I finally read the book, and the movie's not totally like the book. But it's great in itself. Mm-hmm. It's one of those where, like, the movie's just a, or the the books are kind of a different story than the movie. Dude, the movie's but, fantastic. Yeah, the movie's fucking it's, awesome. It's well ahead of its time for when it was made. Yeah, and definitely. And it's like it's just it's just fucking awesome. Kim cult classic. Great. Yeah, just great. There's nothing wrong about that movie. I was right up there. Even when Denise Richards gets stabbed through the fucking <laughs> like <laughs> stabbed through her shoulder and should be just like in. Her arm should be useless by then. At the end of the movie, but she's just kind of walking around like it's no big deal. Some pure adrenaline. You know what? You know, yeah. Yeah, Brain bug. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll make an excuse for that. Yeah. It's fine. Exactly. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's supposed to be a fun action movie, (laughs) fighting bug aliens. But yes, that, I don't know. I think they're just working on script and stuff now. I don't think there's been in production or anything. But yes, keep that on your radar. I'm definitely keeping that on my radar, yeah. And then another one, and there's there were a ton of these I meant. I wasn't going to talk about all of them just now, but another one that popped up for me that I'd be interested in is doing a remake of Escape from New York with motherfucking okay. Snake Plissken. All right. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of those originals. Mm-hmm. Fucking Kurt Russell at his most badass. Um, Jumanji so, remake. Yeah. Is that a remake or is that a sequel? That's a remake, right? That's a reboot. I guess a reboot because now they have that second one coming out. I'm just. I don't know. Can't probably the nostalgic factor, but I, it does not compare to the original board game, Robin the, Williams. The fucking, well, and then don't don't forget the actual board game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we actually play the board game. It's fucking awesome. We're doing that in the living room floor. All right. <laughs> but now, I mean, did they ever going to make a video game for the new one that kids can play? I don't see that yeah. happening. Yeah. No, not as good. All right. Um, well, that's all I have for what I'm looking forward to here. Let's. Um, I need a beverage, so shall we pause and then let's do it for the next one. Okay. All right. Okay. Back at it. Beverage in hand. Next coffee. Um. So yeah, the question I had for you that I was thinking about while listening to a movie podcast while in the shower today. Um. So what is a movie that you really enjoyed, but you can't necessarily bring yourself to watch again either because it was too sad, too disturbing. To something, did any movies jump out to you that fit that? Oh well, yeah, there's a there's definitely a few movies that I don't ever need to see again. But that you thought were good. And well, I'm trying to think. I mean. Hmm. I don't know if the necessarily if I thought they were good or not, but uh, I mean I wouldn't call them terrible. Like the reason I don't want to see them again isn't because they were bad, okay? Necessarily, 
Um, but uh, one movie I can think of right off the top of my head is the movie Irreversible. Oh, is that the one with Monica Bellucci? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. for those of you out there, you may or may not know about this movie. I can tell you right now off the bat Mm -hmm. that it's a very difficult watch. Um, Mm -hmm. And on two, really on on two parts. One, because of one particularly gruesome uh, beatdown, sexual violence scene. Yeah, that scene, yeah. Uh, And then the the other part is just the way it's filmed is kind of really hard to watch. Um, Yeah definitely don't need to see that again <laughs> yeah actually that, that's that category for me too um then there's like uh and kind of there's some other movies that i've seen that are kind of like that like you know like not not you know minus the really violent scene like um into the void is it enter the void enter, the void. enter the void i've heard about that one yeah. yeah don't need to see that one again not because it was a terrible movie but it's just very um i don't need to see that again no yeah. Interesting, because that's been one. I've, it's been on my list for so long, but I can never, I never like feel like I'm in the right mood to watch it. Even though I keep hearing good things. Yeah, about I don't it. know if you're ever gonna just be in that perfect spot to watch it. You know, you're just gonna have to watch it, and then you probably don't have to watch it ever again. You know. All right, because um, it's also it's like what a two and a half hour movie. It's really yeah, long, so I'm like, do I have time? It's pretty long. This? It's it, the the concept of it is pretty cool, but it, it, for whatever reason, it's just not a it's not a movie that. Uh, that need that deserves a rewatching and kind of so yeah like a shout out to a podcast that you introduced me to the rewatchables yeah. Yeah. those guys yeah yeah these are definitely quite the opposite gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it's not at least in for me i can't i can't could never watch that movie again um trying to think of what other ones like um I know for me, you know, I have seen this more than once like um requiem for a dream is one where i'm like i don't have any urge to put that back on just cuz it's so intense yeah I actually really, I mean, and yeah, like to your point, I actually really like that movie. Yeah, it's really good. Don't know if I actually need to rewatch it again. And it, not because the material, well, I don't know. Maybe it is because of the material. I'm not sure. But, yeah. Like I'd only watch it as with, if it's with someone who hasn't seen it before. I'm like, all right, we can watch this. It's really good. But for me sitting mm-hmm. by myself, I'm not going to be like, I'm going to put on right. Requiem for a Dream and dive back into that. Yeah. Passion of the Christ definitely don't need to rewatch that. Yeah, I didn't think that was really good. So yeah, I didn't think it was very good either. Um, but even if I thought it was good, I it would not be necessarily a movie I would rewatch. Yeah. Um, uh, City of God is one I haven't seen the second time. Even City it's really of God good. is really good, but I have not. Yeah, really gone back to the well on that one either. Yeah, and I keep meaning to. I'm like, it's a really good movie. I want to show my friends. It's an excellent movie. Yeah, it's an excellent movie. Also intense. Yeah. Some hard scenes, but yeah. Um, and then Hotel Rwanda is one I haven't seen twice, just because that one's intense and sad, right. tear jerking. Uh, and then yeah, easy ones like um, where the red fern grows. That one scarred me as a kid. Anything with fucking dogs <laughs> right. dying, I'm like no. Fox and the Hound. Fox yeah, and the Hound is that probably the saddest too. goddamn. Is that's one of the saddest <laughs> yeah. movies ever, dude. Yeah, I don't need to watch that again. That's for sure. No, exactly. <laughs> Ellen and I talk about that all the time. It's on Disney Plus. We were looking through what they have, and I was like. I haven't seen that movie since I was a kid because yeah. I was so sad. Yeah, it's super sad. It's I've like never seen. Yeah, sad. <laughs> I've never seen Old Yeller just because I know it happens. Like, no, nah, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna make it through that one. Yeah, yeah that's something that came across yeah. my mind. When I was thinking about. And then there's some movies that I've just watched so often that I feel like I really don't necessarily need to watch them. Not that I mm-hmm. couldn't or shouldn't, but yeah, that's a good question. I'd have to think about that a little bit more to really pinpoint some things, but. Yeah, you know, right off the like I said, right off the top of my head would be the first two I mentioned: Irreversible, Enter the Void. Yeah, yeah, I would um, agree with Irreversible. For Inland sure. Empire. I haven't heard of that one. From David Lynch. Oh, mm-hmm. really cool. Like the you know the way he films things is always is is always really cool. But, uh, man, that is a hard movie to get through. Um, Inland Empire? Yeah, Inland Empire. I haven't heard of that one. Laura Dern, I forget who else is in it. Yeah, oh, fucking, Jurassic Park Shake? Yeah. Um, but it's funny that you mentioned it, because now that I'm thinking about it more, even a movie like Royal Tenenbaums, which I've seen maybe yeah. close to like 10 times, uh, where I feel like how I feel right now is like I'd never need to watch that movie again. <laughs> That's um, funny. And I love that movie. I- 
yeah. I, I, maybe I, you know, I've seen it enough and I'm just familiar with it enough that I don't think I'm going to be able to get anything more out of it. So. I kind of feel that way about all Wes Anderson movies where they're all good and I like them when I watch them, but then I'm like done. I don't have an urge to think, oh, I want to watch that one again. Like that's an easy one to put on and just rewatch again. Right, yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I probably definitely wouldn't. But they're all good. Yeah, I yeah. enjoy those. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. I'm sure I could pinpoint some more. Yeah, a little bit of time. Come, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was my shower thought today. It's like, oh yeah, right. what about those. Yeah, movies? some movies. There are a handful of movies that uh, definitely you just don't want to watch again. Yeah. Um. For whether me, because they were bad or whether because they were just too much of something. Yeah. yeah. For me, the ones that are just so either down or depressing or sad, those ones are like, I'm just gonna have to, you know, I need like a. a Post movie that's like a little Disney happy movie yeah. afterwards to bring my spirits back up. And not to say that you like we don't appreciate those movies. We obviously do appreciate yeah. them, but there's a difference between appreciating them and like really liking them enough to. Yeah, and they're probably made not to, to be rewatched over. Like you don't want to revisit that topic over and over again. Right, um, right. One, like I can't imagine too many people like having irreversible like on the top shelf of their movie DVD <laughs> yeah, stack, they watch it on like, a weekly basis yeah unless you're really fucked and up. then it's like uh, you know companies over it's like hey you guys ever seen this before like, watch <laughs> yeah. us like nah dude like, it's a great friends over yeah, watching movie night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah you know yeah. bust out the popcorn no yeah no it's not a popcorn movie <laughs> i guess one that's been up there for me recently too is um when that shakes the barley i don't know if you've seen that irish movie no with killian murphy before he made it big in america that one's just hard because it's like the true story of how the Irish were treated and whatnot um, in colonial, not colonial, whatever, in the British were ruling Ireland those days during the revolution. And it, get, it starts off cool, and then I'm, every time I watch it, I'm like, God, this the last two-thirds of that movie are just so depressing. Yeah. And it's like, I need, a, I need a pick me up movie afterwards. Yeah, you know, I never, and I never actually ever really sat down and watched 12 Years a Slave from start I, yeah, to finish. Actually, I haven't seen that either. Can't imagine that I... Yeah, that I would want to watch that one more than once. I think I've only there. seen Amistad twice, maybe three times. Amistad, maybe three I've times only I've seen, seen once. Yeah. You know, I guess the way to do it would be to think about the movies you've only seen one time and then ask yourself the question, why? Is it yeah. because they were just bad and you weren't that into it? Or is there, like, just because, they're, like I said, there's just too much of yeah something that you just you don't – feel like you need to fucking watch it again like. yeah seen one, one of them recently uh mother like uh, mother was good right. i'm glad <laughs> i saw it but <laughs> that's right yeah i wouldn't yeah, go back yeah. to watching that anytime uh -huh. soon oh. but yeah there you go. well uh i have a question for you uh, this can mm -hmm. kind of segue into our theme of, of the episode so have you been for paying sure. attention to the charlie's angels kind of like um thing going on with the reboot here uh no i only know that a reboot is coming out well the reboot came out oh did it okay yeah and um, it has the aladdin chick and i like her a lot so i'll, I'll probably watch it yeah well and you, it, there's this whole thing now with uh elizabeth banks directed it and then there was this whole thing going on about she tweeted something that like so you don't know what I'm talking about. Basically, this sounds like, very familiar. I remember seeing something in like a news tidbit of Elizabeth she, Banks. She basically tweeted that um, something. I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to disservice her. She anyway. she basically said that it, that the so the movie bombed hard, and she's basically said it was because men don't go see female led action films, and it received. Oh. A huge backlash, and it received some support. Yeah. Um her tweet definitely. There was people who definitely agreed with what she said. I did see, and, one but thing it, about I, this. I yeah. felt like it did receive a lot of backlash because there's just plenty of examples of female-led action films. Yeah. And she That's said Marvel saying. didn't count because it was part of a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. And I agree with her. I don't think the Marvel movies should count. Yeah. And um, but you don't even have to include like Captain Marvel, for example, yeah. to, to sort of um, uh, kind of call bullshit on that statement. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you had any, any thoughts since, since we don't, we, 
you know, we don't often necessarily talk about pop culture. What's yeah, happening pop, on Twitter pop and stuff. culture yeah. stuff because that's not really what this um, podcast is about. Mm -hmm. But it, since we're talking about you know choose your like a, this is your choose your episode, uh, and there's multiple variation you know versions of Charlie's Angels and stuff. You mm -hmm. know, I just want to know what if you had any thoughts on it. I don't agree with with I don't I understand. <laughs> It's not that I don't agree with what she said. It's that I don't agree with how she said it, I guess. Yeah. Um, I definitely agree with her. Like, I I do agree that there's obviously a um, bias out there. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure, you know, that men have their biases when it comes to what they consider to be um, worthy of their... Of their... <laughs> movies were blowing shit up and you know mm -hmm. running and gunning is you know kind of a thing you know i mean um you know i i don't think that there's very much i don't think that there's very much doubt that if john wick was susan wick mm -hmm. <laughs> it, nice it, wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't do as well i mean it obviously wouldn't and i think she's she's making a point there at the yeah, same some time degree. just how she said it is like you know men don't go see female-led action movies and that's why the movie bombed so the reviews for the movie were terrible now i personally haven't seen it but um and i know yeah. this is this is nothing new that anyone else hasn't said but i completely agree with it it's like well first off i think there's reboot headache going on with a lot of people mm -hmm. um even though sequels are still going to make money and certain reboots are still going to be money grabbers, that's just unavoidable. Um, I do think there's a decent collective of people out there that are just sick of the same old shit. And why did Charlie's Angels need a reboot? It doesn't necessarily need one, does it? Yeah, I mean, this would be the third time um, it's happened. And so... And then the, the movie apparently just isn't good, and I kind of buy that. You know, I can without having seen mm -hmm. the movie, I kind of already know the movie, yeah. Because you know the story, and you know the characters, and you know kind of what's gonna happen. I don't, it, I don't want to step too mm -hmm. far out here, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I pretty much imagine I already know how the movie plays out. I would peg uh, it as being a cat, a similar category as how the Ocean's Eleven female-led one and the Ghostbusters female-led one. Yeah. And that kind of realm where it's, even though Charlie's Angels has always been female leads, but just kind of being like remade sort of thing. Whereas you take like Bridesmaids, and that's an original female-led movie, and that movie is fantastic. Like everyone loved that movie. Yeah. But I feel like it's something that they're, I just think it's a movie that maybe wasn't done well, the new Charlie's Angels, mm -hmm. even though I haven't seen it, so I can't say for sure. Yeah. But it fits in that category. Yeah, of like we've already seen this sort of story before. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's, and like I said, there's examples of female-led action movies. Under, um, Underworld. Oh, uh, ding, under, ding, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, yeah that's what I even think about. Um, I saw, this is what I saw was on, I think it was a Twitter share of this about this, this incident. But there, someone was bringing up a show to, like, um, Ellen Ripley, Aliens, like one of the original yep. female badasses. Mm -hmm. And that's, everyone loves fucking Aliens, mm -hmm. especially men. Um, and then like Sarah Connor, Terminator mm -hmm. stuff, also female lead. So it's it's happened in the past. So I don't I could see that Elizabeth Banks probably frustrated that maybe it didn't do well or maybe critics are saying stuff yeah. she doesn't like. But yeah, there's there's plenty of examples I'd say of female led action heroes that men yeah. like. Yeah, I just thought it was interesting. Uh, I don't know the whole thing. Was, well, mm -hmm. I thought it was semi interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but as it as it pertains to our podcast, which is about movies, I just wanted to know your thoughts on it. If you had followed that at all, or or what? I just seen that a little bit. But I mean, for me personally, when I see like an action, like a chick action hero, I'm like, oh, I'll take this, like Tomb Raider type stuff. Um, even like the Aeon Flux movie, yeah, which is I, okay. And... I think the movie has to look good. And I think, yeah. and I think it has to be right. You know, I mean, I didn't go rushing out to see the John Wick three when it came out. Yeah, I take and I'm my time, not thanks. going out to rush to see Charlie's Angels either. So, yeah. uh, original is, new ideas, you know? are, yeah, more appealing uh, to me. I mean, um, yeah, it, fe for for me, female male is is a little coincidence. Does the movie look good? Yeah, or doesn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And my my interest is always peaked when I see a, like a new female action lead, with um like Salt with Angelina Jolie. Like I'll check this out, see her being a badass. Um, was it Atomic Blonde? Charlie Theron, that one Atomic too. Blonde, I was yeah. like, oh, I'll check these out. These look fun. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, it's more just uh, the the content, I guess, of the movie. Uh, and plus, you, you know, uh, she didn't really get anybody that was super noteworthy. I think Kristen Stewart is like the biggest name in yeah. that movie. Yeah, from Twilight, uh, though. Yeah. It's, you know, look at look example for uh, this movie Bombshell that's about to come out. Now I know yeah. these are two different genre genres, and one is sort of kind of really based off of some true shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but Look at the cast. Yeah. Nicole Kidman, Charlize Theron, and fucking Margot Robbie. Like, that movie's going to kill. Yeah. I would be I would be shocked Those if this movie right <laughs> did not do well at the box office. And, uh-huh. you know, that kind of speaks to a bigger problem in Hollywood about maybe really talented, deserving people not giving their due, not getting their due, not, not getting enough credit mm-hmm. for, you know, whatever. At the same time... It's a star-driven industry, and it always has been. You know, find some bigger names, maybe. I don't yeah. know. And that has nothing to do with men not wanting to see female leads. That just yeah, has no. with nobody knows who these people are. Yeah, they're not as big. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I guess for me, I mean, Charlie's Angels. You know, like just looking at that movie, you know what the Charlie's Angels is about. I'm never gonna assume it's gonna be in that top grade category of movie it's gonna be this is gonna be like a fun action movie you, you just you know watch at home yeah when you're bored or something i didn't think the one with the i didn't think the one with barry moore and lucy Liu and yeah. uh, uh, cameron diaz was anything spectacular and i didn't think it was going to be yeah you know exactly just, it's just a fun like oh it's gonna the be a story fun lends movie. itself to yeah more of a b movie mm-hmm. but it did well because of how it was casted yeah bill Every murray is, is yeah is charlie and uh yeah, I don't know. She needs to take some responsibility for that one rather than just deflect entirely why the fucking yeah. movie bombed. That could just um, been an easy Twitter defensive reaction that, you know, I have time to think about. Yeah, and she's think. human, you know. Yeah, I love Elizabeth she's Banks. Gonna, she's she's gonna, fucking awesome. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know she she's has every, every right to be frustrated. Yeah. But, damn. Yeah, which yeah, that's, that's actually a category I want to get into at one point is female action movies because mm-hmm. you got, uh, what's it, Baby Kill Bill? The Bride. That's it. Yeah, The Bride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's tons of good examples that yeah. I'd love to get into. Yeah, Kill Bill is actually a perfect example of a female-led action movie that's done quite well. Yeah. In the box office and as a cult following mm-hmm. after the fact. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, yeah, that's good bringing into remakes and reboots. Choose your versions. Um so how do you want to do this? I had some characters we could start with in movies. Did yeah. you have your own? So the concept that when I originally thought of this concept, I was thinking of it as like a, you know, uh, more character driven. Mm-hmm. So we can start with that and then we can open it up more to be a little bit more broad. So, gotcha. Because some yeah. of them kind of cross over. Yeah. Like Batman is its own movie, mm-hmm. but it's also a character. And I have, a, a you know, a list. Um, and I don't even know what real order to go in. <laughs> I figure I might put some of the big ones at top that we can go through. But do you want to go yeah. take turns? But, yeah, yeah. Let's going? take some turns. Okay. Let's just shoot some things back and forth. Uh, maybe we'll have some arguments. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I bet we'll we see. will. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a lot of agreements, too, because we saw a lot of these together. Um. All right. You go first since okay. you thought the same. All right. I got, I got one right off the bat. All right. Choose your favorite Judge Dredd. Choose your Judge oh, okay. Dredd. Is it Sylvester Stallone? Or, um, oh God. I can't remember his name either, but I know because um, I saw the movie. God, I like this guy too. Yeah. So bad with names. Let me, me I'm, I'm going to look it up because he's in the boys. We need to do, we need to do Amazon. this justice to. True. I'll get the names in there. He's in a lot of, he's in Lord of the Rings. He's in a lot of good action movies. Yeah. Oh, Carl Urban. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So is it Sylvester Stallone's version or Carl, Carl Urban's version? For me, I got to go Stallone. Gotta go Stallone. <laughs> yeah, I mean the newer one was more like gritty and like traction, but then Stallone '90s is just kind of over the top. <laughs> or am the law? <laughs> just one-liners, action movie. Yeah, that one. I'll always picture that when I think oh, of Judge Dredd. Oh my Dredd. god! <laughs> yeah, so we watched the we watched the the Stallone one a, a few times <laughs> in our youth. Um, I love Carl Urban's version. Yeah, I love what he brought to the table. I I, th- it's, uh, I think it's more closely tied to the comic and mm-hmm. books and stuff, but for me too, I agree. My, uh, if I had to pick one Judge Dredd, it's Sylvester Stallone, dude. Yeah, just because of that movie, it's just <laughs> so over the top and just the, the it, it's just perfect. He he did it. He it's did a, it so 
like uh, I don't. I, it's a great crappy movie. Yeah, a great crappy <laughs> movie. And he, he, you know, yeah. <laughs> I would definitely take Stallone. Stallone's my my judge dread of of choice. Fucking the, his little mouth. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> like if I were to if I were to make I've always wanted to make a, a judge dread costume for Halloween. I'd base it off his costume. Yeah. That's yeah, how it right? looks. <laughs> awesome. Um, and this is one. So I took some from your list here. Put up my top ones. This one might be hard for me because I haven't seen every version of it. Um, but what is your James Bond? Yeah, see, that's a good one. If I had to choose a James Bond, man. There's quite a – who's who's on the list? We got Sean Connery, Roger Moore. Mm-hmm. I don't know one of the other old, the older ones. Um, yeah, you got Pierce Brosnan. You yeah. got um, – Pierce is the one I was introduced to. You have uh, Daniel Craig and uh, – who else is there? There's one more missing that James Bond fans are screaming at us about. Timothy Dalton was one. Timothy Dalton. George Lazenby. Lazenby. Yeah. David Niven. Looks like there's a few David Niven, maybe. Now, for me, this one's. <coughs> I always thought, and this is probably biased because I, this is the first time I saw a James Bond the movie, was Pierce Brosnan. So I always thought that he had the look of like what James Bond looked like, with like the dark hair, yeah, nice square jaw kind of thing. Yeah, we're two for two. Pierce Brosnan's my James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know heads probably are exploding. Yeah. But uh, no, it, it, it's it's the one I it, – he's, he's probably my James Bond because it's the one I'm the most familiar with. Yeah. I'm so – Directly tied into James Bond because of Goldeneye. True. More than any other played movie. Played hours of um, that game. Played hours of the video game on N64, and the movie itself is fantastic, and I watched that a lot. It's the best Pierce that's, Brosnan one. That's, yeah. what I, that's when I fell in love with James Bond. Yeah. I've seen other James Bonds. Uh, you know, everyone has their merits, but uh, I'm, yeah. The, the movie that made me fall in love with the character was Goldeneye. Mm-hmm. Just so happens that that's that's Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, Same, so, yeah. Yeah. And I still, I, since I haven't, I've only seen maybe one Sean Connery. Don't think I've seen a Roger Moore one, and I've seen almost all the Daniel Craig ones. And I like Daniel Craig too. And those movies are fun, but yeah, just not the same. Mm-hmm. When I think James Bond comes to mind. Yep. All right, what you got next? All right. Who's your Willy Wonka? Is it Gene Wilder or Johnny Depp? Oh, Gene Wilder, without question. Yeah. No hesitation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three for three. That's mine too. Which is funny. So back in college, I remember I texted you this. So the new Willy Wonka, and this is when I was first getting into smoking weed and thinking, I was like, oh man, I'm going to smoke weed before I do everything. And I was like, I chose that movie, the new Willy Wonka, to be the only movie I'd ever see. Like I had to be high to see that movie. Mm-hmm. And I've only seen that movie twice now. I was high both times. Um, but it's just <laughs> not, not not as good. And I just don't like John, Johnny Depp is, I don't know, he's too weird to too much trying to be like a weird character whereas Gene Wilder seems like he actually is a weird person as Willy Wonka right and I just yeah I just love Gene Wilder too he's awesome yeah so yeah easy Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka yeah I agree with that yeah definitely um mm-hmm. this one you'll probably have better take on it because you've seen the new movie but who is your Joker yeah, so this one's a tough one. Uh, this one's probably the hardest one. Um, Cause I know you're a big Heath Ledger fan. Heath Ledger is probably still my my jo- my Joker, my choice for Joker. Yeah, yeah. I, I like. Uh, obviously, Jack did did an amazing job. Mm-hmm. Uh, really like Jack's version, um, because yeah, he played it right. He definitely played that role right. Um, it's like true to the show kind yeah, of version. Really yeah. like uh, Joaquin's portrayal, although it wasn't straight. It wasn't the Joker in sort of prime form. It wasn't even close to the Joker mm-hmm. in prime form because it's, it's like his origin story. It's kind a of. little bit more of an origin sort of. Well, mm-hmm. not even a little bit. It is. It's more of an mm-hmm. origin thing. Um, and you're missing uh, a Batman battle. You're, you're missing, and I know that oh, wasn't. I, see, yeah. I know that wasn't the point of the movie. So mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm trying not to knock him for that. 
Um, I still consider him to be the Joker character. Mm-hmm. However, I got to go with Heath on that. Yeah? Yeah. Where does Mark <laughs> Hamill fit for you? Did you ever watch the shows, the cartoon show? <laughs> it's it's Heath, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't seen the cartoons either. But yeah, for me, definitely Heath as well. I just remember seeing the preview for that movie, and I was like, who the fuck is playing the Joker? Like, I don't, who is this guy? And I found out it was Heath Ledger. I was like, no way. That's him playing that character? And that's, yeah, it's going to be one of the most iconic roles, I think, for an actor of all time going down in history. Mm -hmm. All right, we're three for three so far. Same ones. I think we're four for four. Is that four? Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, No. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. four for four. Can't count today. Okay, uh, here's kind of a, who's your favorite Dumbledore? It's a good one, yeah, because we've just been watching... Harry because Potter. in this one, they're they're both quite different. I feel like yeah the the um they, they're both very different as far as how they operate and how they play the role, how they how they bring mm-hmm. the character to life. And this is a good one because initially, before I like so every Halloween to Christmas, my wife and I will watch all the Harry Potters again, just kind of get in the spirit of the season. Um, and initially. If you had asked me a year ago or so, I would say the newest um, Dumbledore, and I can't think of the actor's name. Um, he would be he was my Dumbledore mm-hmm. at first, but then rewatching him just this most recent time, it's around the fourth movie now, and so the first two is the one with the older Dumbledore. I think I would say now that he is my the version I would choose of Dumbledore. So the Dumbledore through the first what is that? It's only the first two movies. First two movies, yeah. yeah. Um, because he, he seems like he fits the book more. Like, initially, I thought the newest Dumbledore, um, I liked how, like, a powerful his voice sounded, and he seemed more, like, intimidating. But then in the, in the book, the Dumbledore is actually, you know, kind of quiet, soft-spoken, but he still has commands like authority, I guess, or to be listened to. And then rewatching the old Dumbledore again, I was like, oh, when he wants to, like, actually project his voice, he can actually get mm-hmm. pretty loud. But he's just very soft-spoken and looks frail and old how Dumbledore's supposed to look in the book. Mm-hmm. So that's why I went back to the first Dumbledore, which he would have been great if he, you know, lived through the whole series. Yeah, I like that first version better too. First version Dumbledore, which is Richard Harris. That's yeah. Um, Cuz I know his son is in some other movies and stuff too. Yeah, that's my Dumbledore and I for exactly that reason. He just he just looks in more Dumbledore. Mm-hmm. Just the way he carries himself is how I always imagined Dumbledore to be. In the books. Yeah, kind of soft, raspy. Voice. Yeah, that's how I always imagine. Just to be more fragile from a physical standpoint. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah. Um, yeah, the, I guess the, the other Dumbledore from Michael Gambon, his his Dumbledore is a little too, uh, too punk for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little too spry. I mean, he has a good voice part for it. The part that ruined me, I guess, in it, and it's in this fourth movie, The Goblet of Fire, watching again, is when Harry's name comes out of the goblet. Mm-hmm. He's like, Harry Potter! <laughs> he runs up to him, did you put your name in the goblet? Where in the book, it's like Harry, Dumbledore's not screaming it. He's just like asking him calmly. Right. I was like, oh, yeah, that doesn't sound like what Dumbledore would do. Mm-hmm. Plus, his ties his beard up. Yeah. His, uh, yeah. I don't like that. Kind of like a big... Why is he tying his beard up? I mean, I guess it would get in the way of everything, but yeah. Yeah, well... Good point. Fuck. <laughs> Shave yeah. the damn thing then, man. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> All right, this one for you. I'll keep it in the DC universe. Um, who? Which version of Batman is your version? Which I got to think on this one, too. Well, I think the obvious toss-up is... I think, anyway, my goddamn opinion, it's it's uh, nipples, Batman, Michael, that Ke- Val Michael Keaton, yeah, that was Val, <laughs> Michael yeah. Keaton and uh, Christian Bale, is the mm-hmm. coin flip version. Um, I know maybe some people put Ben Affleck in there. I don't know why the fuck they would. I definitely um, would not do Ben. I think, I think Ben Affleck is probably the best Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Um, but as far as wearing the fucking costume and, and, and being Batman, well, I don't know. I mean, 
I don't know if I would even put. I even like Val. I like Val Kilmer. I do like yeah. I mean he he pops in where I'm like the look, just the look of him. I like. Was that the nipple costume or is George Clooney the nipples? I, I think they both were right. Do they both get nipples? Maybe George Maybe. Clooney more so. Yeah. I think that I think that uh, he did fourth two. one got just uh, clownish, and and just like yeah, how it, a like, silly. Like how everything looked, like how Gotham City looked, and then how all the costumes were it was just yeah, yeah, yeah got way over the top, yeah. like an alien world. <laughs> yeah. uh, Christian Bale definitely is one, but for, for me, like I love the Michael Keaton ones, but he just doesn't seem like doesn't have like the physical appearance of being like a Batman mm-hmm. superhero kind of take. Yeah, even though I like them. I feel like, like the, the the Michael Keaton. And Jack Nicholson, original Batman, has mm-hmm. to hold a special place. Um, because for me, they're just like two perfect guys for that particular movie. Yeah. Um, they just fit that movie so well. Tim together. Burton style yeah, of it together, yeah. and uh, but uh, Christian Bale is probably my Batman. Although I do think uh, Ben Affleck is, is the best Bruce Wayne. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah, two different people, Batman and Bruce Wayne. There you go. Yeah, I'd have to agree. And I think a lot of the the Christian Bale Batmans was just how it was all done. Like, was that Christopher Nolan? That one? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just with it being more realistic feeling, whereas like the previous Batman iterations were, yeah, just a way too out there and over the top with right. fucking Schwarzenegger, Mister Freeze kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, everybody, chill. <laughs> 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 the movie was so bad, dude. Yeah. The movie was so bad. Yeah. Okay, we'll just keep it moving here. Um, <clears throat> how about your April O'Neil? Oh, yeah. Turtles. So I had handed down there. April. The OG April? Uh, yes. The legit redhead? Um, like, legit redhead? Yeah. And I got a. I was just seeing her name when I was doing Ninja Turtles stuff the other day. Um, Her- Her- Meredith Hogue is that her name? Hoag. Um, but yeah, she is definitely the April O'Neil for me from the OG nineteen ninety. But Judith, that's it. Judith Hogue, Hoag, mm-hmm. however you say her name. Yeah, she definitely fit that. I think the best out of all. Definitely not Megan Fox. Definitely anybody not but Megan, Megan Fox. Fox. Uh... If they were one, the one I would think today from a, an actress that's out there right now, I'd probably go with um, Emma Stone to be who I would choose to be the April. Oh, Emma remake. Stone would be a good choice. Yeah, for, exactly. for another April. Yeah, <coughs> not Megan Fox. I was, I was. That's one of the many things I was displeased you're not, with. You're, you're down on Megan Fox. I actually didn't like. I didn't mind her, her, her April and Neil at all. Mm, yeah, no, none of that for me. But the original one still for sure yeah. for me. Yeah. Judith Hogue. Judith Hogue, yeah. She was definitely, just everything about that movie, which we'll get into deeply oh, next yes. month. Oh, yes. I want to get the yeah, dive deep into all the Ninja Turtle shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but who's, not even any of the animated ones I didn't really like, or in the movies. The second April from Secret of the U's and the third original movies, I wasn't as big a fan of her either. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the OG. OG. Um, let's see. Hmm. How about your Robin Hood? Kevin Costner for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the American accent Robin yeah. Hood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kevin Costner for sure. Oh, this one. You know, for me, I'm gonna go with uh the Fox version, the animated Fox Robin Hood. <laughs> You have the personality for it, <laughs> for sure. I mean, that's solid. That's yeah. solid. Yeah. yeah. Not Russell Crowe. I didn't like that one. Yeah, Taron Egerton. That was that was fun. Yeah, I, I did yeah. enjoy his take on it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't my most favorite Robin Hood movie. Men and Tides. I mean, Men and Tides would be second for me. Men and Tides. Yeah, 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 yeah. El Ellis. What that's? I can't remember his name, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Animated Fox. That's where I'm going with. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely Kevin Costner for me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about your Mystique 
from X Men? Is yes. it Re- Rebecca Romaine or is it Jennifer Lawrence? This one was tough when I saw that on the list because I do like Rebecca Romaine's a lot. I don't think when it came comes down to it, I think I like Jennifer Lawrence. Oh come on, man! Her performance is more, yeah, bigger. On, yeah, dude. said more of a character, I guess, behind, it. and that's where like Jennifer Lawrence got big when that that first X Men. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. I no, know it's that. a Rebecca Romaine, dude. Yeah. It's oh yeah, absolutely. You, what you know? She, well, I'll give you. She was more mysterious because you didn't. She didn't have as many lines. So you didn't really get to know her as a character as much. Yeah, that's how she should be. That's how I went. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I can see. I come around. Plus, that she one. could kick Jennifer Lawrence's ass, dude. Yeah, the animation CGI wasn't as good enough on, on her. No, I mean in real yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. We're talking real can life. Can be fair. Here, dude. Yeah. Yeah. She would fuck Jennifer <laughs> Lawrence up, dude. Put that in a celebrity death match kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so that two that we've had different ones on? I think so, yeah. Um, Who is your Spider-Man? Yeah. There's been I a don't few know. of them. Is it Toby? I hate them all. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh. picking one is hard because I really can't stand any of them. I can't stand the new kid. What's his really? face? He sucks ass. What was the other one? Gar Garfunkel Garfield, Garfield had that, one run. That yeah. guy sucks, dude. Um, I really can't stand that guy. He's probably my least favorite. I'll give you that. And uh, Toby McGuire. Is it Toby? Uh, man. <laughs> oh God, dude. I guess it has to be Toby. Reluctantly. <laughs> Yeah, reluctantly has to be. Toby. You just don't like any of the Spider. Yeah, I really don't like any of the Spider Mans. I have not oh. been a fan of the Spider Man franchise. You, you can include the end of the Spider Verse Spider Man. Have you seen that? No. You, that might be one you actually enjoy because it's they have a bunch yeah. more to choose from. Yeah, as far as live, live action. Yeah. Um, that's a not a good franchise for me. Interesting. I really don't like it. I'm totally Tom Holland, the new guy. I like him a lot. I think he's great. I think he fits Spider-Man perfectly. He looks mm-hmm. young enough, kind of has a quirky kid attitude. Yeah, it's definitely him. <laughs> Not Toby. Not Garfield. But you're Toby. All right. <laughs> yep. All right. Tom Holland. <laughs> Did it. What about... Uh... Oh, let's... Let's see. What about your Mad Max? Well, see, was uh, Chris Hardy? Was he? I guess his name was Max. Tom wasn't Hardy. It? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> One of those white dude first yeah, names. Tom Hardy's <laughs> supposed to be Mad Max. Yes. I see. Cause I didn't know if it was just a whole different part of the world, the same world, or it was supposed to be the same character. Um, it's hard for me because. I only saw the first. That's when it was Road Warrior, right? It was the first one. Um, I saw that long time ago when I was a little kid, so I barely remember Mel Gibson's performance. I'd probably have to go with Mel Gibson, though. I think I have to go with Mel Gibson too. Yeah. Yeah. The new ones are fun, but it wasn't. I, don't know, I didn't get much of Tom Hardy's performance in that one to be Mad Max. I mean, I liked Tom Hardy in that. I really liked that movie. Mm-hmm. I think I liked that movie more than the Road Warrior, but. Uh, Mel Gibson just does a better, better version of it. He's got the Australian accent. You're <laughs> supposed to be in Australia. He's just got the yeah. better version of it. Yeah, I'd go with that. Um, your Pennywise. Uh, the old one. Tim Curry. Yeah, Tim Curry. Yeah. I did. I haven't seen the Tim Curry one in a while. I've saw some clips recently. I don't know. I do really like the new guy, the Stalsgard, Starsgard, however you say his name. I do like his performance a lot, especially because I saw those most recently. I, I'm leaning towards him, actually. He had a little bit of oh, creepiness. Oh, you th- oh, okay. Probably because, I mean, Tim Curry is great. I love a lot of Tim Curry movies, especially in Legend. That's like iconic <laughs> Tim Curry to me. It's great. Yeah. But I just see him in as Pennywise, and it's kind of it's not scary enough for me. It's kind of comical, I guess. Oh, uh. which should, I mean, it's clowns. So maybe there should be some comedy to it, but yeah, no, I'm gonna go with the Stars Guard guy. All right. 
All right. Yeah. Got any other ones for me? I mean, I got one that'll kind of push your buttons a little bit. Oh, shit. All right. Push away. <clears throat> and I, I mean, there's no reason to ask it because I know your answer. Gotta do it anyways. Now I'm curious. <laughs> All right. So choose your genie. From oh, Atlanta. yeah. Okay. Easy. Ron Williams genie. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Would you, well, are you, I don't know, you're Will man. Smith? Oh, I don't know, bro. Yeah, you do know, though. I might go Will Smith on uh, this one, dude. Yeah, big Willie. Not. I might go Big Willie on not. this one. <laughs> <laughs> you can like his performance, but the when you think of the genie from Aladdin, you think Will Smith before Robin Williams? Well, I mean, I, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Yeah, you do. I'm, I, I, think <laughs> I, I, I think I'm leaning towards Will Smith being my favorite genie. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, it just didn't fit. I mean, he's a good genie. I'll give you that. I did like him, but no. No way. Ron Williams, that's genie all the no way. No way, huh? Yeah. There's no way? It just fits the genie having that sporadic, crazy you know, like personality can change from here. That's definitely Ron Williams. If Ron Williams was any cartoon character, he'd definitely be the genie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Done. I mean, hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. I'm glad I got that one out of the way. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we should we broaden the scope here a little bit? Do some movies, yeah. To get to the ending here. Uh, what's uh? So your version of Godzilla movie can also be, I guess, a character. Um. Well, for me, it's still the older ones that that we watched, like the OG Japanese ones. Yeah, with the guy in the suit. Yeah, I haven't. Seen, I had those on VHS. I, I remember. Them, but I yeah. remember watching them, even with the three-headed dragon guy. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, for whatever reason, I like. I still like those ones the best. Those are definitely iconic. That's what started the whole yeah. Godzilla franchise. I'd say definitely not the uh, Matthew Broderick ones from <laughs> the 90s. Yeah, Great soundtrack on that one, though. Not Soundtrack's one, good. No. But <laughs> no. Have you seen the new Godzillas? The um, two? I saw one of them. Yeah, first one or second one? First one, I think. Which is fun. Yeah. That's the, the That one's good, and the second one is actually really good, too. They mm-hmm. had more characters from the... The lore of Godzilla. Right. But yeah. I, I like him a lot. He looks like Godzilla. He has the same Godzilla atomic breath powers and stuff. Yeah, but he's like too, it's too, it's too much. It's like, like all over, over the, it's all just all over the top. It's like, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's too much. Too much? Yeah. It's too much. The other ones are, 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 you know, tasteful. <laughs> just classic nostalgic they do have the one with the turtle guy and I did love the turtle guy a lot so I'll give you that All right, I got one here for you mm-hmm. who's your favorite vampire hunter mm, vampire hunter so who we got we have blade Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter who else kills vampires you have Van Helsing Van Helsing he's out now what? Nah, like the what? Like the uh, the movie Van Helsing with the yeah. Jack yeah. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, yeah, no. What? No, it was cool that he turned into a werewolf in that final battle, but it just could have been much better. No, easily Blade for me all the way. Best vampire hunter. Well, Blade for sure. Yeah, Blade, Blade, Blades a Blades a run to a winner. But I'm I'm surprised you're so down on Van Helsing, man. I didn't. I thought the movie was just okay. Wasn't that good? <laughs> No, and I, I mean, even I love werewolf like iconic monsters fighting each other. Werewolf versus vampire, but yeah. even that battle. Well, like, just nah. he wasn't badass enough for you, or what? No, yeah, it was too too like made for TV movie kind of feel. Hmm. I like it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but no, definitely not Van Helsing. <laughs> yeah, so we well, agree on Blade though. Blade. It's definitely Blade. <laughs> yeah. Blade's the Blade's the fucking man. But yeah. I would do Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter over Van Helsing. Oh, Cuz no. that movie was more fun to watch than Van Helsing. <clears throat> yep. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, man. I know all about that. <laughs> um, 
This one's probably a no-brainer, too. Um, old Boy, the Korean or American version? Oh, if the you've Co- seen both. Oh, the yeah. Korean version. Yeah. Yeah. Hands down. No-brainer. Um, I don't know why they remade that movie. I don't either. It was dumb. I really don't know why they remade that movie. Wasn't it Josh Brolin? Yep. And I like Josh Brolin. Same. And I'm not going to blame him. No. Um, but I don't know. Make money. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know why they re- they remade that movie. No, it did not need to be remade. You don't need to touch that movie. No, fucking no, not at all. Yeah, the original is no. fucking awesome. No, no. Crazy awesome. Yeah, that's just uh, yeah. No. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I had on my list, yeah, you know, choose your 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 cinematic serial killer, but I want to sort of. Mm shorten it down to choose your your serial killer from from the silence of the lambs series um specifically between so you got hannibal buffalo bill hannibal lecter and red, red dragon. dragon yeah ralph Fiennes. which yeah, i hadn't seen that one in a while but I'd, i think i slept good with hannibal lecter anthony hopkins yeah yeah Partly, Buffalo Bill's ruined. Buffalo Bill is amazing, though, dude. He's, he got ruined for me because I saw Joe Dirt with David Spade <laughs> before I saw Silence of the Lambs. So when it got to the Buffalo Bill scene, all I could think of was Joe Dirt in the, in the bit. It puts the lotion on its skin. All right, all right. <laughs> I yeah. know, man. Like, the Buffalo Bill is awesome, though. He's an awesome it's character. Great character. And the guy who but, plays them is really does a really good job. I forget that guy's name. Yeah, he's got but that really unique really look. Good job. He played a lot of he those roles. He just looks like a fucking serial killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I liked Red Dragon. I like Ralph Fiennes. I thought he did a good job, but that's probably third on my list. Yeah, I don't remember that being a hugely <laughs> awesome movie. Definitely Silence. I don't know, man. I might go. I think I might have to go Buffalo Bill. You gonna put the lotion on the skin? Yeah. <laughs> go with Buffalo Bill. Yeah. Anthony Fun, Hopkins, like like uh, Hannibal Lecter's character, like while he's, you know, I don't know, he's almost, he's almost like too much. He's almost like, yeah, I, I don't know. He's almost like, too he's much. got too much going on. I see. Like Buffalo Bill would be your underdog kind of one. Yeah, I think Buffalo your Bill is like the dark horse of like. You know, um, because he's got a lot going on too, but it's just within himself. Like, it's, you know, and and, and Hannibal Lecter seems just far too, eh, I don't know. I mean, I I, award winning. I I think that's why it's, I think that's his (laughs) appeal is that he, he does have a lot going on and he's not one dimensional or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then if we're gonna open Too it up, good. if yeah. we're gonna broaden it past that realm, you know the the guy from the cell is pretty good. Serial yeah, serial killer he from did that a good job. one yeah. is good. He's good. I like him. Um, so now you're talking about like serial killer, serial killers that, but not like Michael and Jason types, like no, yeah, different movies. Or t- taking yeah. lives? Did you ever see Taking? Ooh, lives? Taking Lives is really good. Uh huh. Yeah. I, I can't remember if he was actually a serial killer. Was he a serial killer or was he just... Or just fucking with Angelina oh, no. Jolie. Then you got uh, Kevin Spacey's character. I was seven. just going to say Seven. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that was that was a good one. He played a good creepy in that one. Um, well, I got two alien ones for you. First one's probably easy. Which version of The Thing is your favorite? Assuming you've seen all of them. I have not seen all of them. Actually, I've never seen the first original one. I only saw the, <clears throat> saw the Kurt Russell one and the most recent one. I didn't even see the most recent one. Uh, it's not worth seeing no. as much as <laughs> the Kurt Russell one. <laughs> that one's yeah, definitely the best thing. Yeah. Which I think I've heard some other people's opinions online. It's the best one out of the three, even with the original one, which I've never seen. Um, mm. but then they have a more difficult one. Which version of the Xenomorph Aliens your favorite uh the aliens those like the just with the queen or you like the actual like the drone xenomorph look in that one oh which version of the actual alien yeah 
Oh. So you have like the the pred alien. You got like the dog looking oh. alien, Alien Three. Oh. And they even have the new oh. new like alien, alien Covenant one. Right, the Alien Covenant. Or ones. the Neomorph. Those ones in the. The Covenant mm-hmm. ones are actually pretty cool. Mhm. But the Queen. Yeah. The queen's pretty badass. The Queen's pretty badass, dude. That's probably still my favorite. Yeah. That would be my choice. Yeah, those ones, I re- just because I rewatched Alien for Halloween, and then I watched the second one right afterwards, and I was like, these movies back-to-back are like the most solid original and sequels probably that are out there, I would say. Because the first one's great in its own right, kind of the more horror movie one, and then Aliens is just fucking awesome, well-done action movie. And then I went into the third one, I didn't finish the third one, because I'm like, it's just not as good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, who's your favorite uh, Robin Williams character? If you had to pick one Robin Williams oh, character. Oh, shit. That one's tough. Hmm. Ew, because I'm torn between his more comedic roles, but then they also have the good, I mean, like Jack is in there. Don't say Bicentennial yeah, Man. Bro. Bicentennial Man's in Jesus there. Jesus Christ. Um, Peter <laughs> Pan. Yeah, uh, Peter Pan's up there for me. Yeah, that's great. This, that one for me, I like Anth- or, uh, Anthony Hopkins. Um, Dustin Hoffman is Hook. He's probably like my favorite character in that movie. Yeah, he's great in that yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, Genie, of course, is in there. Birdcage Robin's in there. <laughs> Birdcage Robin's really good too. Dead Poets Society, Good Will Hunting, but I would say no. Dead Poets and Good Will Hunting, even though he won the Oscar for Good Will Hunting, those still wouldn't be my favorite Robin movies. Patch Adams Robin. Patch Adams is good. Uh, um, Mrs. Doubtfire Mrs. Robin. Miss Doubt Miss Doubt, Doubtfire Robin's good, dude. You know, thinking of that one, and that one just struck with me. I guess I kind of identified because one, Robin Williams looks like my dad. And then the whole family dynamic and they were like divorced with kids and stuff I like identified with growing up. I think I'd have to say uh, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams. I think Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin, like really kind of encapsulates all of the kind of elements of Robin Williams. True. There's drama in there. There's comedy. He does his range of like the voices and stuff being the the voice actor that he Mm -hmm. plays. Yeah, I'd yeah. say that. And that's, I watched that movie probably the most when I was a kid growing up. Like when I, I think uh, whoever I was being babysat by at their house, the Trishies actually, they um, they had that movie, so I'd watch that all the time over there. Right. Yeah, it's Stoutfire for sure. I mean, then you have like, I mean, he's done so much. And mm-hmm. some of them are like, a lot. like Fisher King. Did you ever see Fisher King? I don't. The Fisher King? Oh. I think so. Dude, you should watch The Fisher King. Have seen The, the Big White? The big white I have not seen, no. It's kind of like a Fargo, but with um with Rob Williams yeah. in it. Oh, I've seen, yeah, 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 I've seen, this is on my list of Rob movies I gotta see. Yeah. Fisher King, yeah. Yeah, watch The Fisher King, that's a good one. What Dreams May Come, Robin. Ooh, it's another one I really like. I need to go back yeah. to and watch that one again. Even good, though, that's good, Robin. Yeah, yeah, I know it didn't get good reviews, and I hope I don't think it aged as well, but that I did enjoy that a lot when I was younger. Yeah, Miss Doubtfire. Um, well, I've got one. Should we wrap up with this one that might segue into our Christmas talk for in a couple weeks here? All right. Which um, version of A Christmas Carol? Uh, the Muppets one. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> Easily. Although you haven't seen the Jim Carrey animated one, which I'll let you borrow. Okay, but yeah, the Muppets one did easily. Yeah. Oh yeah, just Michael Caine as Bob or uh, not Bob, fucking uh, Scrooge. Yeah, Bob humbugging it. Yeah, it's just easily the best one. The fucking <laughs> song with the Ghost of Christmas Present. It's like the singing of a street going a choir. <laughs> <laughs> it gets stuck in my head every Christmas. Yeah, uh, yeah. The music I think makes that one for yeah, me, and yeah, the Muppets. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, easily done. Which, yeah, we'll talk about lots of that and other Christmas movies come uh, next episode. And I will let you borrow Arts of Christmas. That would be your homework, I'd say. Watch that before the next one. All right. 
Uh, but yeah, this is good. There's there's a bunch more we can get into. Oh yeah, I mean the the thing is so endless. So, I mean we mostly agree on a lot of our versions of things. I think yeah. there's some, you know, there's good and bad from every sort of thing. I try to yeah. go into every thing with like an open mind, mm-hmm. um, based on who's playing it and. And how the story might be different from one thing to the other, and I try not to, I try not to measure anything up to its predecessor or anything like that. Um, yeah, I try, I fail sometimes, and it's really hard, you know. I mean, especially you know, the I think the one of the, one of the more popular mainstream debates going on out there, particularly because of this release of the Last Joker, is you know, who's 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 the who's the most iconic joker yeah you know? who did it better yeah i mean and, and it's up to opinion for yeah, sure yeah yeah i mean it's all subjective obviously mm-hmm. but you know you can there's something you can appreciate from each person's yeah thing it is fun to see what different people bring to the yeah. character or the movie and, or whatnot. And even even jared leto's suicide squad joker which yeah. by no means was a good joker yeah. um if you put that joker into any other Batman movie, he almost doesn't really work at all. He all works worse. Yeah, you know his style, like his, just his look and how he does it, has to be in Suicide Squad. Yeah, that's true. I could or so, see. or even to even to do it. Actually, a better example would be let's put Heath Ledger's Joker in Suicide Squad. Yeah, I was just saying does, that. That would doesn't not work. work. At all. That does no. not work at all. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Like, yeah, it's got to fit the vibe of the whole movie. <clears throat> yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Even though yeah. the movie's trash, and Jared <laughs> yeah. Leto is not a good Joker, but putting but it just goes to show you know it kind of had to be that way almost. Yeah, you can't you can't try to shoehorn a Heath Ledger Joker into a movie like Suicide Squad. It just wouldn't work. Yeah, it's not the same comparison yeah. at all. Mm-mm. But yeah, good. We can keep that on a, a back burner. Always bring in when we want to change things up. Do more choose your own stuff. Choose your version. Mm-hmm. Excellent. All right. Well, yeah. So next. Uh, what, next week or the week after one of those so i'll be out of town after that we'll figure that out but we'll do holiday movies which will be mostly christmas movies i don't know when you hanukkah movies out except for eight crazy nights that's not very good we should um, do a that's definitely just just christmas yeah there's yeah, plenty of that yeah, we'll get yeah. into that because that's um, gonna that's there's so many i mean yeah. i don't know what your penultimate christmas movie is Ooh, that's that'll be what I'll think on. Like what? That, that that's something I want you to consider. I okay. want you to bring to the table. What, not, what is your penultimate Christmas movie and why? And why? And it might be the one I'm gonna let you borrow, so you have to see it. To then I can explain it. No, nah, I don't why. think anything's gonna trump my Christmas movie. Yeah. My number one. It's probably Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. That's not very good no, and boring. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Okay. All right. I'm curious to see. Um, all right, well that's it. Uh, this time I'll remember to share her social media on here. Be sure to not, check us. It's not Die Hard either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would that one's better than Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. <laughs> but be sure to check us out on Twitter at Real Movie Pod. That I haven't really been keeping updated or anything, but it's yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it exists. So you know we will yeah, hopefully start to. I haven't done anything with it since we've got it up. So maybe yeah, we'll post some things for Christmas stuff on there. Mm-hmm. We'll use it every now and then, but yeah, we we get notifications if you say anything on there, um, or you can send us an email at realmoviewatchers at gmail dot com, and that's real r e e l like a movie yes. reel. Spell it correctly. There's the pun yes. there. Yeah, otherwise you won't find it. Yeah. Or right now we have everything on YouTube, so you can search for Real Movie Watchers on YouTube. And I think probably in 2020 we may be looking at using other platforms. So. Yeah, yeah. T- 2020 is going to be a big year for the podcast. I feel like we're definitely going to get um, our stuff more available on some other uh, media platforms. We might have a special guest or two, I'm feeling yeah, like. Yeah, we've got some friends to talk about. Yeah. And dare I say, dare I say. Dare, it? dare. <laughs> dare I say. <laughs> 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 Dare I say we might even have a, and I haven't talked to you about this yet, yeah. but a live podcast, um, live video podcast. A Ooh, live, live crazy. video podcast. I'm game. Yeah. If we can figure that out and make it work, yeah. If we I'm can game. figure it out and make it work, we'll try for that. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to do my hair and stuff and 
put some clothes oh, on. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sitting well, here naked every episode. You don't episode. have to do anything. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Let's do it how it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that we change everything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. Excellent. Good shit. And we'll uh, talk to you closer to Christmas. Later. <laughs>